sometimes I think for those who experience success, especially when you come from so little as myself and in your case, and I'm sure you've experienced moments where you've almost felt like you were kind of falling off that line and God has so much grace for us and, and mercy and patience and he allows us to, to come back, gives us the opportunity to simply repent, right? And course correct in, in the business world, we call that a pivot, right? We call that a, a change in, in strategy. We call that an update in the manual of how we're going to serve clients, right? As simple as that. So go ahead. Yeah, but, no, but and absolutely, right? So every, everything you said, you know, five stars, right? But, <laughs> but here's, here's what I, I want people to understand is, is uh, God doesn't want our money because he needs it, right? Like he can do anything he wants. He's God, right? Like he's, he could make anything happen. He could, he could install a new roof on your church that your church has been raising to, you know, money for two years for, right? Like he could just magically in a second put new shingles on that roof. He can do it. So, so the question is, well, why does he want our money if he doesn't need it? Well, it must mean because it has something to do with us, right? It must mean he has, it has something to do with me, right? So uh, I, I get annoyed and I'll, I'll, I'll tie this full circle in a second. But for me, I, I get annoyed when uh, rich Christians will say that their their you know their money is a blessing from God, right? I, I get annoyed, especially if I know their heart and I know where they're at, right? I, I get annoyed because here's the thing: if I'm if I'm the enemy, if I'm Satan, I want you making two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. I want you having a big house. I want you having a super nice car because chances are you probably are in a position where you feel like you don't need God, right? So if my job is Satan, like, like, I hope everyone knows, Satan's job isn't for you to be poor. That's not his job. God's job is not to help you be rich. That's not his job. Like we human beings, we Christians, man, we think so small sometimes. Like we think about just our life here on earth, right? But if, if you're Satan, like, here's what I want. If I'm Satan, if I'm the enemy, I want you to believe in as many lies as you possibly can, because in Satan, Lucifer, if you look at Satan, it's the it's the father of lies. If you if you read what his intent, what his translation of his name means, it means the deceiver, right? It means the father of lies. So for for me, if I'm the enemy, I want you believing in as many lies as you possibly can that separate you from the love of Jesus Christ, right? And his redemptive work. That's what I want. And sometimes that lie is, hey, if I make $250,000 a year, it means I'm successful and, you know, I'll give credit to God, but I don't actually need him, mm. right? Like, so, yeah. like a lot of Christians have placed way more security uh, and, and, and their f firmness on, on money more so than anything else. So much so that it's like when we make a lot of money and we stop inquiring of the Lord and we think to ourselves, we will actually give credit to God as a way for him not to. So I'll give you a perfect example. So um, I and I, I might get kicked out for this one. I, I, and I by the way, I have I have I've led Bible studies in my church and I've said this and I've been asked to not lead Bible. Study, right. So so just warning you, I've warned you. Right. Um, but me personally, uh, I I do not believe in tithing. Right. I'll wait for all the hate comments to come in. Right. But um, <laughs> I. I, I personally don't believe in tithing and here's and here's why right there you go three people left already so I, I personally don't believe in tithing because uh there was a time where I tithed very faithfully very faithfully right like 10 percent I had an, an additional five percent for Thanksgiving offering right like I was that dude man that I, I was I would tithe very 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 well to the church and uh one day the Lord convicted me and and I mean, it spoke to me as clear as day, as clear as Jesus showed up to, to, to Paul on his way to Damascus. You know, Jesus, I had, I had an encounter with him and he says, you know, Daniel, I think you love giving me 10% of your income because it just means you can control and have the other 90. And that stuck a knife through my heart because I had neglected the fact and the truth that during my time here on earth, everything i have is his right it's 
all God, right? It's all, right? Like Jesus says, give to Caesar what is Caesar is, give to God's what is God's. What is God's? My heart, my soul, my mind, my body, my strength, my money, my marriage, my like my family, my house, my everything, right? So so today, the way I walk in today is I, I live in a place of freedom where I go, okay, God, everything that I have is yours what do you want me to do with it today right what how do you want me to allocate your resources today you want to talk about being like imagine being called a good steward and you only you only are obedient with 10 percent of the resources that is the master right like imagine if you were a hedge fund manager and you have a client that where it's the client's money it's not your money it's the client's money like you're a money manager and you you're only doing 10 percent like you only allocate 10% of his money. Right. And then the other 90%, you're like doing whatever you want with it. It's basically, you're going to get fired. Right. So it's in, in other words, it's like you get a million dollars from a client. A client says, go invest this million dollars. You stick 900 in a in a small, in a, in a savings account that earns less than 1%. And you just take 100 grand and you go invest that in the market, in a business and earn 10, 15%, whatever the case may be. You earn 10% on 10% of the client's money. That is a terrible rate of return. It's a horrible ROI. Life. Right. It's, 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 it's a horrible ROI, right? So um, the, the, the point that I want to drive, and, and by the way, like when, when I live under that, it ends up being more than 10% in terms Correct. of what I end up giving. Yes. Right. I can, I can assure you of that, right? It mm -hmm. ends up being way so, more than 10%. So to, to give, uh, you understanding for the person that just said, right? Because even I have wrestled with this before where I talk to pastors that are afraid to say what you're going to say, because then basically tithes go down in the church. When you say that, when you free people from that obligation of being forced to tithe, if you don't X, Y, and Z will happen. So just to be clear, it's not that you, you're saying, I don't believe in tithing in the context of how it is being used and taught in the church. That does not mean you're not giving money, right? Like that doesn't mean that you're um, making a uh, like a loophole. Everything that I do in my companies is dedicated toward what God has for me to do. So therefore, it isn't my money to begin with, even though my name may be on the LLC or the company or these bank accounts, it is being fully driven and guided by God's influence over my life. Holy Spirit is working directly hand in hand with me on these day to day transactions. That's what yeah, because okay, because the understanding is that it's God's money and it's not mine. And, and, and God, God has a very like it's hard for us to think where God doesn't care. Right. But I can assure you, God cares very little about money very little he cares more about money in a sense where what our viewpoint is on money right like he jesus talks about it the second most right the second most thing he talked about because of it dominates our mind right like that's the whole reason why like if it didn't dominate our mind if humans had a, the the righteous view on money jesus would have never talked about it right but but he talks about it because it dominates our mind and but and by the way for pastors that are like oh i'm afraid to say it because i'm afraid tithing goes down well it's like in that case, what master do you serve? Correct. Because I don't know about you, but I believe in a God that is capable of anything. I believe in a God that takes care of us even when we don't have money. Mm -hmm. Like I think, I think there's a reason why Christianity is thriving in places where there is no money, right? Like where it's in some of the most poorest countries. Like that's where Christianity tends to thrive the most is because for them, they have nothing but <laughs> to be able to rely on. Right. So and, and by the way, if you look at the original translation of Hebrew word for righteous, it just means to, to have your actions and your words be aligned. Yeah. Right.